It is Monday, November 2nd, 2020, and you are tuned into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Today on the show, we'll go over some results from the weekend. I've got a cool story about Kyle Strickler's race-winning car from the weekend, and we've got some World of Outlaws and USAC driver news. But first, this episode is brought to you by Blood Lubricants. Blood carries a high-performance line of synthetic racing oils, and they've got you covered for all sorts of dirt racing applications. Engine oils, gear oils, suspension fluid, cleaning products, you name it, they've got it. Sprint car driver Danny Dietrich uses Blood products products and he says they found the biggest thing in using blood lubricants is the dec uh, decrease in maximum oil temperature blood engine and gear oil has increased their bearing pinion and parts life and that's big in the sprint car world they've got a great racer support program that offers discounts on products plus free swag and they support hundreds of racers across many divisions throughout the country if you'd like to check out that support program if you'd like to find more information if you'd like to buy some blood products uh, visit bloodlubricants.com that's b-l-u-d lubricants.com and if you'd like to receive 25% off most products, use code DIRT at checkout. That's D-I-R-T, all caps, at checkout. Most of the major racing series were off this past weekend, but there was still plenty of racing happening across the country. Out in California at the Tom Tarleton Classic at Keller Auto Speedway, it was a banner weekend for Carson Macedo. He was actually driving two different Tarleton racing machines, uh, both a midget and sprint car. He started off the night on Friday with a win in the $2,100 to win at USAC West Coast Midget feature over Ryan Bernal and Shannon McQueen. The night's 410 sprint car feature paid $21,000 to the winner and included some really big names, guys like Kyle Larson. Brad Sweet, Darren Pittman, Rico Abreu, Aaron Reitzel, and many, many more were in attendance, but it was again Macedo who was dominant. He started on the pole and led every lap to take the win over Larson, Sweet, Dominic Selzy, and Pittman. It was a rare opportunity to see many of the outlaw drivers participate in a big regional race. Uh, if you'd like to watch that race, if you uh, didn't uh, get the opportunity to stay up on Friday night to see it live, that's uh, available in the on-demand section of Flow Racing. Back here in North Carolina, not too far from where I'm sitting, the World Short Track Championship took place Friday and Saturday night where seven divisions of racing got to take the big stage at, dirt tra at the dirt track at Charlotte. In Hornet action, John Wyndham, Walker Wyndham, Joey Kelly, and Chase Hopper all grabbed feature wins. John John Wyndham and Kelly won two each. Braden Pruitt won the mini stock feature for the second straight year. Saturday's pro modified feature was won by Jeff Parsons. It was his third pro mod win at Charlotte. Caleb McLaughlin took the street stock feature in a race shortened by crashes. Brian Mullis was declared the 602 late model winner after initial winner Colton Truel's car didn't pass post-race inspection. John Ruggiero was the pro late model feature winner, while Will Harrington won the pro late model all-star invitational. And Kyle Strickler led every lap in the UMP modified feature to take the win, while David Stremme won the all-star invitational race. Highlights from the weekend are on the Dirt Car YouTube channel, while the entire programs can be watched in the Dirt Vision on demand section Speaking of Kyle Strickler, there's actually a really neat story behind the car he drove to that UMP modified win at Charlotte. The car is actually owned by Ryan Flores, who is the front tire changer on Brad Keselowski's NASCAR Cup car. I talked to Ryan today to get all of the details about the uh, the kind of building of the car and, and actually the story behind the chassis and everything. Flores bought the car from Strickler earlier in the year with plans to put it together so he could take it racing himself. The car was actually a previous winner at Charlotte with Strickler driving, but had since been wrecked by another driver. After it got wrecked, they stripped the car and the busted up chassis was stuck in the weeds behind Strickler's shop. After buying the car from Strickler, Flores and Jerry Kelly, who is a car chief on one of the NASCAR teams at, uh, at Penske, started putting the car back together. It had quite a bit of damage. It needed a front clip and, and a lot of other work to kind of get it uh, back in a place where they could start putting it back together and race it. Flores and Kelly's work to put the car back together is actually featured in multiple parts in recent issues of Speedway Illustrated. Around a week before Charlotte, Strickler asked Flores if he could drive the car at the World Short Track Championship, and Flores said yes, but the car wasn't finished yet. They probably needed to thrash all week leading up to get it finished, uh, but then the delays at the Texas NASCAR race kept Flores and Kelly in Texas until Wednesday. They had several people working around the clock Thursday and Friday to get the car finished so Strickler could drive it. They actually started hanging the body on Friday morning around 4 a.m., the group sent their truck and trailer to the track on Friday to get their pit spot, but the car was not with them. They were supposed to practice Friday afternoon, but missed those sessions while finishing up the car back at Strickler's shop. After they got the car to the track on an open trailer, Strickler ended up going fastest in qualifying and won his heat race on Friday, and then Saturday led every lap of the 30-lap feature. It's a 
pretty cool story and kudos to Flores, Kelly and Strickler's guys for getting all of that work done in such a short amount of time. Flores is a buddy of mine. We certainly talked about the car here in the last couple of months. Uh, he told me that he bought it and then he was putting it back together, but pretty neat to see him uh, get, be able to get that win as a car owner. Uh, he still plans on racing some crate modified shows around the Southeast when he has free time. If you would like to check out more about the story and the build, find those recent issues of Speedway Illustrated. The 2020 Short Track Super Series season came to a close on Saturday night at Georgetown Speedway where Matt Shepard grabbed his first ever win at the track. Billy Pouch Jr., Anthony Perego, Stuart Friesen, and Tyler Dipple rounded out the top five. The fourth place finish for uh, Friesen was good enough to see him lock up the South Region Championship for the year and grab a nice $10,000 check for doing so. Friesen was also the North Region Champion. In late model action over the weekend, Tyler Erb won a 10,000 to win show at Pike County Speedway. Zach Dome won 10K at Richmond Raceway in Kentucky. And Rick Eckert won at Georgetown Speedway as part of the Short Track Super Series weekend. If you'd like to see more weekend winners, check out DirtOnDirt.com. Looking ahead, all eyes this week will be on the dirt track at Charlotte as the World of Outlaws late models and sprint cars close out their 2020 seasons. Kyle Larson will be doing double duty, which we talked about last week. He's going to run both the Paul Silva 57 and the Rumble. Six. Donnie Schatz will actually also race all four nights as well, driving his Tony Stewart Racing 15 and then his own number 15 late model. Brandon Shepard will be your 2020 late model series champion while the Sprint Car Series isn't quite decided yet. We'll dive into those race nights later in the week, including uh, we'll do some win predictions as well. In USAC news, Chris Windham will run double duty during the Western World at Arizona Speedway in a couple of weeks. He's going to drive his Tucker Boat Midget and a sprint car for Bill Michael. The Michael-owned team won twice earlier in the year in CRA Southwest Sprint Car Action with CJ Leary driving. Also, Justin Grant will run the six-race Western USAC Midget Swing with Petrie Motorsports. Grant previously drove a Petrie Midget during the Pennsylvania Midget Swing. It's a quiet day on the streaming services, only USAC 24-7 happening on Flow Racing. I don't believe there's much going on tomorrow as well. Action will kick back up Wednesday uh, with late models taking to the dirt track at Charlotte with the Ward of Outlaws. That will be live on Dirt Vision. Um, if you'd like to see that full streaming schedule every single day, you can find that at dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope everybody has a good Monday. You can find Dirt Tracker Daily on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or where you get podcasts. Please subscribe and leave a review. You can also watch the show every day on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, you can also find the podcast on Amazon Music as well if you're looking uh, on there. You can email the show at info at dirttracker.com and you can follow along at facebook.com slash dirttracker, twitter.com slash dirttracker, and the website itself, dirttracker.com. You can follow me personally on Twitter at Justin underscore Fiedler. Uh, if you'd like to follow us on TikTok, you can find us there at dirttracker as well. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.